Right, I'm back and we're going to be continuing where we left off. Um, I wanted to demonstrate histographic segmentation briefly, really fast. It's just a nice advanced segmentation functionality, um, which is not available in many softwares. Um, so we'll just do it on the fibers here as well. So if we have, if we ignore everything else, we've got the fiber data set, we go to workflows at the top and we go to histographic segmentation. Um, you can do this. This is basically looking at two or two histograms at the same time and segmenting based on two histograms, not just a single histogram. So in this case, the default is usually using a Sobel filtered version of the same data set. You can also use different, you can create different landscapes or, or different image channels to um, do that with, you can play around with that and you can use certain masks to limit the, the uh, what you want to um, apply this to. So let's just compute the double histogram here for this data. And we see something that looks like this. Basically you have a histogram in one axis and on the other axis and a, a two dimensional representation of that. Now, what this is useful for is you can segment and paint in the histogram domain in here or in the image domain and vice versa and use both. So let's start with the image. Let's start with the image domain. What we want to do is, um, let me just see, where is it? Oh, we need to add to a region of interest or two regions that we want to add pixels to. So let's say we want to make the fibers yellow, for example, and we want to do this in the image domain. So we, what we would do is we would zoom in a little bit and select a certain location of fiber and everything with the same gray values is already highlighted there and everything with the same gray values as you see there is now in this co-histogram also at this point. So to improve that, we can now paint in the histogram domain. So click on the paintbrush in the histogram domain and we can add that and that and that and that. So all of that is now representing the same thing. So that's quite interesting. And I don't actually know, I've never done it actually like this. Yeah, okay, that's fine. What we can do is we can use a, um, for the region of interest too, we can do that. So we can select everything else like that. There's some uh, zero pixels, which I also want to paint just so that the algorithms don't get confused. Right, so what we can do now is we can make, um, we can try different things here, but the, I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on this. So I'm actually, this is as far as my expertise goes. And, but that's not a bad way of solving segmentation problems and looking at a different way at segmentation problems. You can cluster things in the histogram domain. Um, it will basically, you, um, let's try to do this for two reasons of interest and it'll make a nice separation to classify all pixels basically. And you can also do an image domain at this point, a watershed. So both ROIs are then expanded up until the watershed of whatever landscape is selected. So um, you, it's, a, it's a powerful additional tool that can be used for segmentation. Let's just see how this turns out. And once we are done with that, we're moving to a different data set. What I want to do next is I want to uh, show a more classical um, um, alignment or registration function. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that works quite not nicely. Unfortunately, it also selected a lot of background pixels as fiber and a lot of noise in between as fibers, but it's, uh, it's just a demonstration of the tool really. So maybe it's not the best data set for that tool. So I don't want to save that. As I said, we're going to be moving to a different data set. 
let's load a different session, uh, which is bracket small for demo. <laughs> so this is a bracket, as you see behind me, on my, behind my face, there's a background with a bracket. This is a additively manufactured titanium bracket, which is topology optimized. This is my research background. What we have here is this is a CT scan of such a bracket that has been 3D printed. And just to get its 3D render slightly better, I would do that. And um, it's quite a, a good quality 3D print, but it's not perfect. There are some imperfections and we'll see that more clearly once we, um, once we do a part two CAD comparison. So that's what we wanna do now. We've got a, a, a design file, a, a CAD file, which has been converted to STL. Uh, we can import STL files into Dragonfly. So you need to make your CAD files into STL format. And then we, we can do a mesh to mesh registration. So this is, a, this is a mesh registration, mesh type, and this is an image type. So we cannot align meshes directly to images or images directly to meshes. We can align images to images and meshes to meshes. So for this particular case, what we will do is we'll take the image, we'll make a basic segmentation using a defined range upper. You see that works quite well because this is quite a simple case. Um, we can also say, um, full inner areas in case there are pores inside. And um, we can put the defined range off. So at this point, we've got a region of interest for the bracket. Now we can make a mesh of that. There's different ways of doing that mesh. You can also right click. I've shown you before uh, to export to a mesh. You can also right click on the ROI. Well, actually, sorry, this is for exporting from an ROI. You don't actually even need an ROI. You can actually go directly from the image and create, extract an ROI. Whoop, no, that's not it. Sorry, wrong function. Um, it's under, uh, just have to find the function here. Generate contour mesh. Sorry, that's it. And you can choose the threshold because it's a thresholding operation and we can subsample it just to make things slightly faster on the processing side, linear interpolation, every second voxel. So we're exporting that to a mesh and that's done. So we now have a, a mesh there and we see it with a white line around it. And if we look at that in 3D, that should be visible and um, if we put the image channel off, this is now our CT scan mesh. So this is the, let's call it the actual um, bracket. And this, the design is the nominal bracket. All right, so we're doing a nominal actual comparison. So the, we want to align the actual typically to the nominal because the nominal is in the XYZ coordinate system as you would design it. And um, now the way to do that is to take the actual bracket and um, up, uh, go to the main tab and use the move translate, translate rotate tools. So in this case, do this and we can do this and we can do this. You can see that. Now we might need to move it in space a little bit. I don't know where the other bracket is exactly, but we can also move it here. Oh, we can do that. You can see it needs to move in along the X axis. So the X axis is this direction here. So if we click on the move and we click here, There we go, it's not directly updated. There is a dynamic refresh that is active, but now it needs to move in the Z direction. So let's translate in the Z direction slightly. Oh, we need to go down in the Z direction slightly. Is that too far? Yeah, I think it's too far. Let's bring it back. Okay, 
So let's see, at this point, we can start to see something overlapping slightly. Ah, that's, that's quite nice. So this is a manual way of doing it. We do have a mesh to mesh registration, but manually aligning slightly initially helps the algorithm a lot. So now let's take the actual bracket, right click on it and do a mesh registration. In this case, we mo we're moving the actual bracket and keeping the nominal stationary and we apply that. And now it's quite fast because we've already done a pre-alignment. And what we can do is we can now make a, a, a calculation, right click on that mesh and make a signed deviation map compared to the nominal. Okay, and that's it. That's basically the, the nominal actual comparison. We can give it a different name. It's got quite a long name there. So this, we can call it nominal actual comparison and All right, so now we've got the color co uh, coding from uh, on the legend from minus 22 to plus 12, which is not so great. What we'd like to do is we'd like to um, use a measurement inspector there. So the range can be changed here from minus one to one, for example. And we can also change the lookup table. I, I prefer the temperature actually usually actually the inverse temperature so that um, in this case, I'm going to right click here there and flip color points horizontally. So there you see, if we're looking at the original data set, we can, we can actually put the nominal there and you see the actual data is slightly warped inwards. So positive in a way, positive deviations are more red in color and negative deviations are more blue in color. So in this case, um, we'd like to go to the inspector again and go to minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And at the moment, that's giving you a quick overview and we've got hide out of range measurements, which we don't want. Um, so you can hide certain and inspect certain ranges of measurements as well. So that's the quick overview of how to do a, that kind of um, alignment or registration and also a nominal actual comparison. And the measurement inspector functionality works on any analysis. So you can select any range of measurements and you can um, select a range, for example, from minus from let's take only zero to one millimeter as your, as your range that you're interested in. And um, that's not, okay, it's not the best data to demonstrate that, but you can select certain ranges and visualize only those. All right, so that's all I wanted to do on the bracket. Um, well, oh, it's not all I wanted to do. I wanted to demonstrate something else which is quite nice, might be obvious to some. Um, if we have a, a data set like that, and we've got the actual bracket there, um, we can um, make a copy of that, mesh, of that mesh, and we can make a, let's just do that. So we've got a copy there. So on this copy, we can now apply a, a mesh, thickness mesh. So, okay, All right. that's easier to, it's easier to demonstrate on the, the bracket ROI. So let's just put that off and put that off. We've got the region of interest, which is over there. And if we now go to segment tools and we go to, to a thickness, exported to a thickness mesh, we can sample that thickness mesh and we can perform smoothing, let's say twice and that should be quite a nice thickness mapping. So if we put the region of interest off, it's quite nice. You see in, you need to click on this in order to see the, the color legend. 
There we go. Sometimes you need to refresh it a bit. So these sections are 2.4 millimeters thick and the yellow sections are 6.7 millimeters thick. So this is on a simplified downscale data, but that's how the function works basically to do a thickness mapping on using a mesh. It's possible also to do it in a different way called a volume mapping, in which case um, both are using similar but different algorithms to measure the lo local thickness where the mesh thickness takes every point on the surface and fits towards the inside a sphere and provides the radius of the sphere that fits the larger sphere that fits uh, before it reaches the opposite surface. The volume mapping fits spheres inside the material and then reports that in 3D. That's useful when you want to visualize only the thickest parts and not the thinnest parts, and you want to visualize in the volume and not on the, on the surface. All right, so I think I'm going to stop there. I think this is a, a good place to stop and um, get back to you after this with um, vector fields. <laughs>